Titans Frontline Podcast. It has been a very tough week, that's for sure. I know how you're feeling. I know how I'm feeling. I know how everyone's feeling, man. It has been a really, really tough week, but we do still have to be consistent, talk it through. I know our fan base is feeling very, very lost right now, uh, and uh, it is a really, really tough time to be a Gold Coast Titans fan. But at the end of the day, man, you know, we do this podcast where we want to be able to still kind of well vent our feelings out and emotions out, for example. But also, you guys need to kind of hear a different perspective to the own inside thoughts that you're having inside your own mind and you need to hear other thoughts that aren't necessarily just Facebook comments that are there to really kick the team when they're down. This podcast with myself, Blaze from BKR Sport, would usually have Clarkie's Rugby League column on as well, but unfortunately, my boy is over there in Las Vegas right now and he did not have time to do this, so I do feel quite lonely on this podcast right now. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how long this podcast will go for this week, guys. Obviously, every single week, we talk all things Gold Coast Titans, Ipswich Jets, Tweeted Seagulls, the women's team, uh, and and everything that is the Gold Coast. You know, it's it's here to to build you up. It's here to make you believe. But also, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Myself, I do feel really apologetic. You know, I do feel really down that maybe I've led people to believe something that isn't true. You know, everything that I do say here in this podcast and everything that I do say in general, and I guess I speak for Clarkie as well, is that we do believe what we're saying. We do really truly believe that this team is great and we do truly believe that the team that we have is much better than what we've been seeing. And that's why we say what we do. But I do, you know, I I, I do really say to you guys right now is that it's hard. You know, it, it's, it's definitely very difficult as content creators where you have to put your face out there and you have to put your thoughts out there and your beliefs out there and you have to kind of have that balance between fan appeasing and also, you know, not shitting on the club effectively. You know what I'm saying? So it's very difficult to balance that. But at the moment, we've just got to get through this podcast. We've got to do it all ourselves, and we're going to try our very best to, to give you something that you'll find interesting this week because... We could have easily said, you know what, Clarkie's over there in Vegas right now. I can't do it myself, and we're not going to do a podcast this week. But I think that if there's any ever a week that desperately needs a podcast, it is this week because everyone is hurting as much as they have. We all know what's happened on the weekend. We've all seen the Facebook comments, the Instagram comments. We all know how everyone's feeling, and I feel like it would be a real disservice to you guys if I wasn't to come on here and have a chat about everything that's going on, regardless of uh, of <laughs> the situation. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Obviously, normal podcast will resume next week with Clarky returning. I think he'll return. Otherwise, he will be doing it in Vegas. But let's get into it here, guys. So if you are on YouTube, we appreciate you. Hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're on Spotify or Apple. We appreciate you guys so much. Do obviously give us a rating. And I think you can comment on Spotify as well, if I'm not mistaken. I think you can. So we'd love to see what you guys have to say. And please be obviously respectful, but we would love to to hear and see what you have to say. But all right, guys, let's get into it uh, because it hasn't been a fantastic week all round with all three of our clubs, to be completely honest with you. But I do think the first piece of news that I have to bring up in this podcast is that we all know Tino Fasso Malawi, our captain, unfortunately, did his ACL on the weekend. Unfortunately, he is going to be out for the season. It's very painful for every fan of this club, and obviously, it's very painful for him most and foremost. Right? He is the captain. He puts every single thing out there on the field week in, week out for this club. And for him to have the you know knowledge now that he's going to have to go through the rest of this year without being able to play a single game... It, it, it brings me back to the Bowie Furman news of last year and how much that hurt us at the time before the season started. We were really hyped, we were really energetic and really believing. And then we got slammed. We got slammed with that Bowie Furman news. And now with Tina Faso Malawi going down for the rest of the season, it's just that all over again. But with all due respect to Bowie, this is our captain. This is the guy that every single week we see massive stats for, regardless win, lose or draw. Tino is always the the first man out there. He's always making 150 plus meters. He's always leading us from the front. So this one really does hurt us. Now, we'll obviously talk through a bit more of the ramifications for that when we talk about the Titans-Dolphins game in a little bit. Uh, But, you know, we do have replacements. But at the moment, 
obviously that is something that is really going to cut us to the core based on the fact that he is regarded as our best player. He is regarded as our best player. I know him personally from our conversations. He's just a bloke just like me, just like all of us that want to see the Gold Coast Titans successful and the Gold Coast community successful. That's what I say about Tino. And that's what I'll always say about Tino. He's not in this for the fame. He's not in this for all this kind of stuff. He wants to see the Titans successful. Obviously, you're going to get your money, right? And obviously, this is a job. But at the end of the day, he truly does care about this community. And at the end of the day, he truly does care about the Gold Coast Titans. So for me, uh, you know, massive well wishes to, to Tino. You know, massive love. And I think that I can speak on behalf of the entire fan base when I say, we're going to miss you, mate. You know, we are really going to miss you this season. That is absolutely for sure. So much love goes out to Tino there. Alrighty, guys, let's move on now into the... Look, we'll, we'll, we're going to get rid of the game that was. We're going to... Oh, no, you know what? We'll get we'll get rid of the two Host Plus Cup action games here today, guys. Uh, because, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to end as much as a positive as possible. You know what I'm saying? With the going into the Dolphins game. Uh, but we'll we'll go through these two host plus cup matches because unfortunately they were both losses. The Burley Bears against the Tweedhead Seagulls at Pigabay Noble down there in Tweed did beat the Seagulls 38 to 12. Uh, that was an unfortunate loss. It, it really did seem like Tweed were well and truly in this game at halftime. At halftime, it was Josh Rogers who scored for Burley and Troy Leo who scored for Burley, uh, where they only got one of those conversions that so was 10 to six. Uh, so we were only down by four points there between head seagulls. But unfortunately, the second half, they just absolutely rolled tweed. They really did. Troy Leo, Hayden Schwartz, Josh Patson, Charlie Murray, Nicholas O'Mealy, and Kia Perere, uh, all scoring tries there for Burley in the second half romp. Braden McGrady, uh, it was actually the McGrady boys that both scored tries for there for tweed. Um, yeah, really unfortunate loss here for, for Tweed in, in a game that we really wanted to win. You know, we all know that Burley went across from the, the Gold Coast Titans feeder club to the Brisbane Broncos, and we were really, you know, hoping for a lot this season. Unfortunately, they are currently in bottom spot. They are in last place in 15th right now without a win. They're the only team in the competition. No, sorry, Clyde Stales have had a bye, uh, so they haven't had a win. But they're the only team right now on zero points. And that's sad because, you know, we've really believed in this team as well. You know, you've got some great players that are listed here. And we saw some, you know, we saw the return of Jaden Campbell in this game. Now, he, I believe, got hooked at halftime, if I'm not mistaken. Now, guys, obviously, you've got to remember, I was at Belmore watching the Titans game. I was there. So I didn't actually get to specifically watch this game uh, because it was on right on after. But it was great to see that Jaden Campbell uh, was able to return uh, from his injury, which obviously you'll see that he's playing in the Gold Coast Titans game this weekend. Um, now, he had nine runs for 55 metres and uh, only missed the one tackle through six tackles made. Uh, obviously, wasn't he had two tackle breaks, though, which is really, really positive. Obviously, we weren't expecting JC to get a whole heap of minutes here coming back from injury. And obviously, we didn't really want to... You know, we, well, we don't want to rush him back into a full workload. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's going to be interesting this week to see how he does crack on. Now, from what I see down at training, obviously, I've seen that he's been, you know, kicking, uh, as in, like, conversions and whatnot, and practicing and, and uh, you know, getting back into the, the whole movement of it all for, for a few, few weeks now. You know, it looked like there was a potential that he could play even round one. But obviously, that was not the case. Uh, and, and he's come back in this game, and now he's named the Titans. But it's just good to see JC back out there because, you know, much love to Keanu, but JC was always going to be that guy that does come back in when he gets there. He is going to be that guy, and that's exactly what's happened. That's who the club have backed in as the fullback in that fullback battle that we saw last year. So, yeah, really appreciative there to see JC get through that game uninjured for starters and, uh, you know, get through that first half. Uh, Tony Francis... Now, he ran for 130 meters through 12 runs, so you've got to really appreciate that effort there for a winger in a 38-12 loss. That is really, really solid there. And he had 61 post-contact meters, which is actually the second highest amount for post-contact meters on the entire team. So really well done there to Tony Francis. You know, despite losing as a winger, you don't expect those numbers. Usually wingers, obviously they perform best when the team is winning. But obviously, Tony, it doesn't matter with him. So really good effort there. Uh, for our other Titans, Tommy Weaver, he obviously went down there with Kieran Foran coming back to the, to the Titans. Tommy Weaver's gone out of the uh, NRL grade squad and into Tweed, where he had 13 runs for 107 run meters. A good there for a 5'8". Uh, had a tackle break to his name as well. 
uh, had 24 tackles, but unfortunately did miss four, had four missed tackles there and an ineffective one. Uh, but he did have 148 kicking meters on the team, uh, which is about 20 odd more than what Lyndon McGrady had, uh, and had quite a few bomb kicks there. So look, Tommy Weaver for me is still quite fresh. You know, no, we'll talk about this. Sorry, it's it's kind of difficult doing this podcast by myself, but you know. We'll talk about Tommy Weaver, I guess, when we get to that Titans game, because I know there's a lot of people calling for him to to play in that seven role. Uh, so we will talk. We will talk about him then. We'll, we'll talk about him then. Isaac Fasul Malawi, uh, super confused with the minutes that he's receiving for Tweed right now. Thirty four minutes played. Uh, he's just not really getting a great deal of minutes overall. Uh, had sixty six meters for six runs. Uh, which is some decent numbers there, uh, considering that he only played a, a small amount. I, I guess you'd still want to see him bump up some runs, but yeah, as in like running in general. But with that being said, like he had the least amount of minutes on the entire team for, for minutes played, the least amount, and still had a lot more runs than a lot of other guys here. So uh, yeah, I, I'm really confused about his minutes there. Has some good post-contact meters uh, and made 25 tackles for only the one miss. So... I'm really kind of confused. I'm not too sure what's happening there with Isaac. Uh, I was meant to ask him at training last week, but I just didn't get a chance. Uh, and then we go to Jacob Arlick as well, uh, who played 80 minutes. He had 14 runs for 136 meters. Really, really solid there. That's what you want to be seeing. He had 51 post-contact meters. To put, so to put that into perspective for Tony, you're seeing Jacob Arlick, you know, a lock slash back rower, getting 51 post-contact meters. But you're seeing Tony Francis run for 61 post-contact meters. You know, so that's why I'm putting it into perspective of how solid that number is there for Tony Francis in this game as a winger. Uh, and Jacob Arlick had 25 tackles for one missed. Uh, anybody else there that I'm really missing there? Overall, no, uh, but... I think we moved past that game there, guys. Uh, Tweeted Seagulls, unfortunately, do go down. And it wasn't the greatest of performances in the second half. But they were in the first. So we just got to hope that things turn around for them as well. We just got to hope that things do turn around for them. So Tweeted Seagulls, they are in 15th position with a 44 points for and 94 points against. So they are conceding quite a few points. They're minus 50 points differential which is obviously the worst there. Uh, however, they have played an extra game than the Western Clydesdales in 14th, but for minus 38. So assuming the Clydesdales were to lose by more than 12 points, then right now you'd probably assume Clydesdales are still in that last position. But with that being said, not making excuses there for that. Uh, and then you go into the... Let's go into who they're playing next. So who they're playing next is the Papua New Guinea Hunters tweeted Seagulls play. And it will be at Pigabane down there on Saturday. Now this is... Kind of at the same time the Titans game is on, so I'm not sure how many people will get there. But if you're not going to the Titans game and you are in the Tweed area, please get down there and show support for our boys. Please get down there and show support for them. They definitely need it right now. And the Papua New Guinea Hunters, they're in seventh position. They've had two wins uh, with one loss. They've got a points differential of 76-4 and 70 against. So they're scoring points, but they're also conceding, right? So... This, this Papua New Guinea Hunters team is beatable with the amount of points they've given up, but you've just got to have some defense. And with the way that Tweed have been defending with that uh, 94 against, it's going to be a tough game for the men. But if you can get down to, to Pig Bean to watch the boys play, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and then let's move now into the next game, which was the Ipswich Jets. Obviously, another one of our feeder clubs. They lost 24-0 to the Brisbane Tigers. Yeah, they lost 24-0. Uh, really not a great game there at Totally, totally Workwear Stadium in Brisbane. Now, the Tigers obviously were the team that won the Host Plus Cup last season, beating the Burley Bears in the final before obviously getting beaten in the um, New South Wales Cup versus Queensland Cup game in the grand final day. Now, the try scorers, yeah, for them, you're seeing guys that, you know, have played in a relaxation before. Rich, Rico Fonico, Maron Seve, sort of double, and he's from, obviously, the Melbourne Storm. And you've also got Leva Harpulu, who used to actually play for us back in the day. A bit of Leva Harpulu action and Trey Stewart. So, really disappointing uh, game this one, for sure, especially with the fact that the Jets last week had a good win. But again, as I did tell you guys last week, it was against the Western Clydesdale, so we did have to bring it back into perspective a little bit. Uh, but to go through our Titans boys here, Harley Smith-Shields obviously played. He had 13 runs for 145 meters and 67 post-contact meters. Really good effort from him there. He had three tackle breaks in this game. Uh, had a couple of dummy, He had a dummy half run, which went for 12 meters, which is really actually quite solid. 12 tackles made for one miss. So overall, really, really... Oh, wow, but he had a lot of errors. Oh, he had a lot of handling errors. Five handling errors in this game. I was about to say, that's a really solid stat line, but then when you look at those errors, unfortunately, 
there was quite a few there. Uh, so if it wasn't for the errors, he would have had a great game, but that is a bit of a frustrating one to look at there. Uh, Aaron Shuppy, Aaron Shuppy, he had 19 runs for a whopping 174 run meters. Now, this was the most out of any Ipswich Jet on the day. Uh, had 78 post-contact meters in this game as well. Had a couple of tackle breaks. Uh, had a couple of offloads as well. Uh, and then he go into the tackles made 16. But unfortunately, he did miss three. So, need to kind of work that one in. Uh, need to, to, to rein that in in regards to missed tackles. But really good to see Shuppy getting back on the front foot in regards to... Um, yeah, really getting back onto the front foot in regards to his run meters. And I believe he's a kicker there as well, for if we am not mistaken. He only had the one error, so that's not too bad. So I, I definitely would say that he's our best player to come from this game, unless I'm proven otherwise. But that looks like some really good stats there. Um, who else would be? Josiah Pahulu, another one. Massive run meters in this game as well. 15 runs for 147 run meters. Uh had 70 post-contact meters as well, which you love to see. 14 hit-ups in this game. Uh, had 40 tackles made for no missed. 40 tackles made for no missed. So, it's between Shuppie and Pahulu, but I'm probably leaning with Pahulu now. I'm probably leaning with Pahulu. That is some massive, massive numbers there for him uh, as, a, as a young blood coming through in a loss. And that's where you look to your forwards. You know, in those losses, you, you look to your forwards to be getting those kind of, those kind of stats and really taking charge and he took charge in that regard, man. So, yeah, really impressed by Josiah Pahulu there. And to have 40 tackles with no missed is really, really impressive. So maybe we could see if Touchwood doesn't happen, but if things don't go in line uh, with kind of how we want in regards to the, the NRL, Pahulu definitely could be looking at a spot on the bench there or could be, you know, maybe making a debut in the front row uh, with, the, with the Tino injury because that is obviously throwing our entire team out of whack, right? So Josiah Pahulu, yeah, very, very good performance there. Uh, Ryan Foran, another one of the Titans books, uh, not the most fantastic games. We had 50 minutes played, four runs for 35 run meters. You definitely want to be seeing way more than that. To be completely honest with you, 14 posting, post contact meters, had the four hit ups, um, one offload, 26 tackles made for two miss. So, made a decent amount of tackles there. Didn't make an error, which is really, really solid, but just need to be seeing way more meters and way more runs than what we saw from him in this game. Uh, and then the last one that's on the specific on the Titans third on the books is Ken Mamalo. Uh, he had a really good amount of run meters as well. So it's really strange this game to lose 24 nil, but to have as many run meters like even guys like Byron Johnson who aren't contracted to us, uh, Jordan Penquit who is a part of us but not you know a part of our 30, um, all running for over 100 meters. Right, it, it's kind of strange to see how much they got beaten by. Maybe it just was that the Maybe it just, it just didn't work out in the day, really, uh, to go down 24-0. But, like, Ken Mamalo still ran for 158 running meters from 13 runs. So that's still a pretty impressive amount. And he had 88 post-contact meters, and we all know that Ken Mamalo is a really solid, has a solid foundation, solid base for himself, right? So that's not really surprising there. But four tackle breaks for him uh, with the one hit up. He had six tackles made for one miss. You don't really look too heavily into that. Uh, and didn't make an error. No, he had made two errors, which is a little bit unfortunate there. So both of our wingers in this game made a few errors. Uh, but at the end of the day, you've got to appreciate... So even though even though our two wingers of Harley Smith Shields and Kemamalo both had errors, quite a few errors, they actually were two of the highest running players in this game. They, they, they still made a whole bucket load of meters, man. So... Uh, and I, I am aware of the actual context behind that. But with that being said, they have made a lot of meters in this game. So we appreciate that. And we're just going to see them rain in on those errors. Uh, and then, yeah, there we go. You know, that's that's the Ipswich Jets in this one, unfortunately. They are still in 10th position. So they're only two points out of the eight right now. Now, their points differential is minus eight, which is definitely not horrible. They're actually only, well, when the Melee Seagulls are in eighth position... And they're on minus four. Uh, but with that being said, they've had the two wins. Uh, the Brisbane Tigers, who are in ninth position right now. So this was actually the Brisbane Tigers' first win of the season too, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, but the Brisbane Tigers, because they've scored more points, are above the Jets. So they've both got a minus eight points differential. The Brisbane Tigers, 64, 68 against. The Jets, 52, 4, 60 against. So minus eight for both. But because I think it is the four... Rather than the against, I think it's the four that does bring the Tigers above them in that situation. Or it could be because they, it could be because they beat them. I don't think so. Uh, but they're in very similar positions down the table after just three rounds. 
And now the next game for the Ipswich Jets is this weekend. Now it's over there in North Ipswich Reserve in Ipswich uh, against the Redcliffe Dolphins, who are in sixth position on the table there. Uh, they've got two wins. Their points differential is six with a 56 scored and 50 against. So they're actually not scoring an insane amount of points. They're in a very similar position attacking-wise to the Jets, right? But uh, defensively, they've given up. Uh, they're not actually crazily far off in regards to the stats there and the points differential. That's not crazy. You know, they've given up 50 points. We've given up 60 points. They've scored 56 points. We've scored 52 points. It's not crazy. So there is a slight chance that the, the Jets could get up for this one. There is a slight chance, but obviously... You know, the, the Jets aren't really well known in the most recent years for getting a great deal of wins. That's why last week was so important and so great to see them win against the Clydesdales. But yeah, look, we, we would love to see the Jets get up there against the Dolphins. It is at home. If you guys are out there in Ipswich, uh, do get out there. Uh, great day out there at North Ipswich Reserve, which I believe they're actually uh, renovating, if I'm not mistaken. They might be trying to improve the... The North Ipswich Reserve, I could be wrong. But yeah, look, there we go, guys. That's uh, that's the Host Plus Cup Feeder Club action for today. A little bit more of a run through today, I guess, because obviously I have to find a way to really cover this podcast. And I, I, I hope you guys are really enjoying, uh, or at least, you know, being able to just kick back and remove your thoughts from the weekend just gone and just uh, relaxing with another passionate Titans fan, just like yourself. But let's get into... The game that we're all here to discuss, right? Let's get into the game we're all here to discuss. It is the Canterbury Bulldogs beating the Gold Coast Titans 32-0 at Belmore. Now, guys, I will lay this out there for you. I was there. I was at Belmore. You guys know me. I go to every single game, home or away. Um, this one was tough. You know, this... You know, this one was tough. You know, to go into this game expecting... I'd honestly go and say expecting a win. You know, the Bulldogs losing their first two games, the Bulldogs being below us the last couple of years and, and being, you know, a bottom four team, not having a great record at Belmore at all. I think it was like three out of their last 12 games or three out of their last 15 games or something that they'd, they'd lost there. Uh, they do know how to give up points and pre in previous season, you know, we, we knew how to score points. Unfortunately, that's not the case so far. So we've actually only scored four points throughout the entirety of the season so far in the first two games and we've given up uh, 60 points exactly. So right now, it is uh, 60 to 4 in regards to giving up points to scoring points. Well, 4 4 and 60 against. That's not great at all. You know, and it's really confusing that we are in this situation right now. And I think that it's, it's really crazy to see. I think it's crazy to see that we not only have kind of gone backwards in defense but we also have lost our ability to attack completely. And, you know, this podcast may not be the most positive one, guys. So if you're here to be really kind of rejuvenated and given a whole heap of belief, I'm going to give you belief and I'm going to tell you that I'll be there and I'm going to tell you that I still will say it is early, but I'm also trying to defend them from myself, let alone from you guys. You know, like I'm still trying to internally come to terms with how this season has gone in the first couple of rounds. Like, it's great that we've had the bye because if we didn't have the bye, we could easily be last right now. We're in 16th position. We're in 16th position. The only team that's below us right now is the South Sydney Rabbitohs. You know, and, and we go into this Bulldogs game. The first half of this was... Uh, it was really awkward wind and it was favouring the Bulldogs in the first half. And the second half, it kind of went away there. But the first half was really awkward kind of win. But they did have the sun in their eyes. Now, Jacob Preston and Viliami Kikau both scored there. Look, the Viliami Kikau one, we, we all know is, unfortunately, due to the pressure that the dogs were targeting Tanner Boyd with all day. That was always going to be happening. He had no protection. I will come to the defense of Tanner in this situation and say, Tanner had no ruck speed to get any kind of protection in regards to kicking that ball in that game. It wasn't just Tanner's fault for this charge down, right? The Bulldogs were ready to target Tanner Boyd, right? And that's not me saying that Tanner didn't have a, an awful game. Tanner did have an awful game. I'll put it out there. You guys, I know I love this guy. I love this guy bits, and I will back him. But this was an awful game, and it's in a backup to another pretty poor game in the Dragons game. So I'm very, very well aware of why people are so frustrated in our seven right now, 
and really kicking the boot in. Okay, I'm, I'm very well aware of that. But I do need to come to the defense in some form by saying our forwards did not lay any form of a platform and a foundation for him to get any room. And I also feel like it may have started to get to him in this game. I feel like, you know, with the pressure on him, as soon as there was a bit of pressure, unfortunately, Tanner kind of did lose a bit of his mind, and that's what really set up for the rest of the game there. Now, we'll go back and also point out that in that third minute, we all saw AJ Brimson pass the ball to Kieran Foran when it was an easy try for AJ if he had have just gone down with it over the line. Right Now, I've spoken to AJ after the game. He thought somebody was on him. He thought one of their players was on him. And it's all very easy for us at home to sit back and say, why did he pass it? That's stupid. That's ridiculous. You know, does he care? It's like, absolutely, AJ cares. All right? I will say this. Absolutely, he does. It was a bad mistake. He understands that. He recognizes that. But at the time, he thought that he was going to get tackled. Now, this isn't on Kieran Foran at all. Kieran Foran knocking that ball on. He doesn't expect the ball to come. Like, yes, you do want him to kind of really always be expecting it or, or be ready for it. That's why you're kind of there in that situation. But with that being said, it's not Foran's fault at all. And AJ understands that. AJ recognizes that he made a mistake. You know, and that could easily have changed the game. You know, if we get a, a try there, all our team needs right now is a bit of momentum and a bit of belief and a bit of motivation. And getting that try there to take the lead for the first time this season, mind you, would have given our young team a really great opportunity to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and really start to put on some great pressure early in that first half, right? Which removes the thought process and the feelings from that round one loss against the Dragons, and you're already off to a great start. And then I will also say the next moment that could have easily changed the game is when we saw the winger, it's not Blake Wilson, I think Blake Wilson for the Doggies on the other side of the field. Uh, I can't remember, but the Dogs scored early, I think seven minutes in or six minutes in, right on after. It got called back for no try. But in that moment, Lofty went for the intercept. Now, if Lofty gets that, it also changes the game, right? So you look in that first five to ten minutes of this game, and you can see game-changing plays. If AJ scores that, bang. If Lofty gets that intercept, bang. Right, But they both did not come off. And that automatically puts the head down, thinking, oh, well, today's not going to be the day. And this is a problem that I've found with this team since I've started supporting them many, many, many years ago, is that when the going gets tough, the resilience isn't there. The resilience just isn't there to turn those heads around from that momentum and get that momentum back. As soon as a couple things go against us, whether that be from the officiating or that be from our own mistakes in general, the fact of the matter is is that these boys, no matter who it is, have always struggled to regain the momentum. And that's why the proof is in the pudding that you need experienced players alongside the youngsters because we do have a lot of youngsters, a, a bucket load of youngsters in this team. And I feel like, for me, we need to see our experienced leaders taking a big step up in regards to saying, hey, listen, that's a mistake. Let's go again. Let's see it as a positive. And, you know, we score that try. We score the the Lofty try. Great. We would have been on top. But it shows that we had those attacking opportunities. We just didn't take them. We just did not take them. But if we do take them, the whole game could be completely changed and we might not be sitting here crying. You know, we might not be sitting here feeling lost we might not be sitting here feeling like, what's happening right now? You know, what, what, why do we have all this belief? And then the season comes crashing down within three games. You know, and the Bulldogs are a team that respectfully, you should not be losing by any kind of margin that is above 13 plus. Like, if we lost this game by a couple of points, and we were in it, we gave it a crack, it was multicultural round at Belmore Stadium, good old packed out crowd, the atmosphere was quite awful for a lot of it, to be fair, but then when they started winning and winning well, that's when the atmosphere picked up. But, you know, good crowd there, Belmore, multicultural round, a very multicultural, diverse area in Belmore and, and that kind of inner Western Sydney area uh, for, you know, the Lebanese and whatnot. And they're passionate and they love their team. So if we lose by a point, two points, six points, I can deal with it. Like, I can tolerate that because we gave it a crack. But this game was just was just wild. You know, our most run meters were from Keanu Kinney with 142. Our most tackles were Sammy Verrills with 43. 
Uh, most line breaks, we only had the one with Loffy. Uh, and uh, and Jimmy Jolliffe there uh, <laughs> says he got the most fantasy points at 52. Now, I'll tell you guys, anyone who doesn't know fantasy, uh, 52 points aren't great. Uh, 52 points isn't, isn't spectacular uh, by any means. It's solid enough, but it's not fantastic. So that's our highest for the, the points there. Um, you know, you look at a lot of these... You look at a lot of these tries that the dog scored, and I don't usually go back and watch games, right, guys? Because I'm there, I'm feeling the emotions, I'm dealing with the hate of opposition fans online through what I do on BK Sport. Um, I'm dealing with the questions from our own fans asking for answers that I don't have. You know, like I wish I had. I wish I had the answers for everybody, but I'm just another fan really passionately supporting this team. And I'm trying to put us into a positive light because this team has never given us a reason to have this positive light in the past. And that's what I feel like, you know, if anyone from the organization listens to this, and if anyone from the team listens to this, I don't believe that the 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 hatred and the dislike and the pure animosity that is coming from the fan base right now is directly and individually because of this season. What I will say is that I don't believe the fan base doesn't believe in Dez. I believe that people aren't going to come to the defense of him right now, besides people like myself and maybe Clarkie. But it's not that people don't believe in Dez. It's that we've seen this every year. We see this every year where we are led down a path where this is when it's going to change. You know, we're led down a path that we're going in this direction. We as a club believe it. I then buy into it. I then promote it. Everyone is always kind of told, feel the energy, right? And we used to have a really good slogan that said, through thick and thin, through thick and thin, which represented the fact that we are a battle team. We are not the Roosters. We are not the Storm. We are not now the Panthers, right? We are not these teams. We are a battling team. And I take solace in that, man. Like, I take genuine belief in those words of we are a battling team, right? No one believes in us. No one cares in us. But we're still here. We're still cracking on. And one day, it will change. We're not promising when it will change. We want it to be now. But one day, it will change. But regardless, we're going to be here for it. And that's where I feel like the difference here is, is that we've kind of lost a lot of what we were. We've kind of started to, because we've signed these players' names and whatnot, in my opinion, it feels like we believe, as a club, that we're a bit bigger than we currently are. And I get understanding, I get, I get trying to you know, force that belief into to saying, you know, we are a big time club. We are going to do it. You know, because that's what I do as a content creator. That's who I am, where I believe. And I will always push that out there. But it just feels like there's a difference between then and now. And then is what I take solace in because I know our fans are gritty. I know our fans are passionate. And I know our fans are really, you know, it, they find it hard to have a voice we don't have a large fan base that can absolutely attack the club right now, like the Rabbitohs, where the media's all talking about this and that. No one cares about us, right? But at the end of the day, we see us. And we need to come together as a fan base to understand that we are all in this emotional time together. We're all in this feelings together. We're all wanting the best for the Gold Coast Titans. And regardless whether the media is talking about us, regardless whether other fan bases are talking about us or insulting us or whatever, we're together. And that's why thick and thin, through thick and thin, was so important for this club. Right? It was so important. And I feel like this organization, and I'm not criticizing them at all. Like, I'm not criticizing them at all because I, I, I do love what Steve Mitchell's doing. I'm, I'm always a passionate believer in what Steve Mitchell's doing. Love Dennis Watt. I love the, 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 the people working behind the scenes. I don't need to name them all. They know who I'm talking about. I love everyone doing what they're doing behind the scenes because everyone's copping it right now. Me, Kalaki, the players, the coaching staff, the organization itself, and you as fans. You know, whether you go to work, you know, when you go around, when you wear a Titans hat, when you go to the game, right? We're all copping it right now, but we're all in it together, right? So for me... That's kind of the biggest emphasis that I wanted to make on today's podcast by myself. 
I could sit here and read you through stats that you know of. You know, and when Clark and I here, we have the back and forth conversation, conversation, sorry, where we'll go through the stats and we'll have that discussion about these players and we try to put a positive spin on it. And it's not like you don't, it's not, I need to really re-emphasize here. It's not like we don't and aren't aware of what realistically can happen with this team. It's not like we aren't understanding that although we believe in this team, you know, shit can't hit the fan. We know it can because it has many, many a times, right? And I will tell you that this feeling right now is the equivalent, if not way worse, than the 2011 season, the 2019 season, and the 2021 season. Those seasons were bad. They were awful to witness. But right now, the reason why the fans are so aggressive is because we feel like that. But also, this is round three. We're going into round four right now, and we're feeling like the end of the season has come. You know, fans are feeling like the end of 2011. They're feeling like the end of 2019. They're feeling like the end of 2021. But we're in round three of 2024 going into round four. So that's where, for anyone listening, I believe the fans are coming from. And I just, yeah, I could have gone here and talked about the stats. I'm not going to do that because I would like, if I was to talk about stats, to have that bounce-off opinion from Dane. I will shout out my three two ones though. I will say my best players of the game, number th- number one, as in giving my three points to, is Jimmy Jolliffe. It's Jimmy Jolliffe. Now, Jimmy ran for 13 runs, had 105 run meters for 44 post-contact meters, had three tackle breaks, uh, 13 hit-ups, uh, 34 tackles made, no miss. That's impressive there from Jimmy. That is impressive there from Jimmy, and he's going to have to be one of the guys that stand up for this team. He played 45 minutes this game. You're probably going to have to see him play a little bit more, to be fair. But that's good numbers from Jimmy. So I will take that three points there and give that straight to him because he needs to be our leader right now. He needs to be our tough nut. He needs to be our guy that will go in a war for this team, and I know he is. I know he is. I know this guy bleeds for the Gold Coast Titans and wants the Titans to be successful. I'm very well aware of that, right? And we need him to keep performing like that. Maybe we might like a few extra run meters there, Jimmy, but like 105 meters is still nothing to be scoffed at at all, right? So Jalen Jolliffe needs to be the guy that takes this next step up now with Tino being out. He needs to be the guy that takes the next step up. Number two points. So two points... I am going to give it to Aaron Clark. I thought Aaron Clark in his 33 minutes was exceptional for the day, as in for the perspective of the day. 116 running meters, 15 runs. Now that is our third highest. Second was Brian Kelly. First was Keanu Kenny. 116 was our third highest for running meters, and he only played 33 minutes of the game. So really impressive there for Ez in regards to that. And then tackles made, he made 30 and missed none. So the two guys that I've given credit to right now are the two guys that didn't miss a tackle and still made 30 plus tackles and were in the top you know, five for, for tackles made in general, right? Uh, also had five, uh, sorry, that's passes. I was about to say tackle breaks. Also had one offload in this game. Uh, did he have tackle breaks? He had three tackle breaks. You know, so that's a great performance there by Ez considering the perspective of the game. Number one is a bit more of a difficult one here. Number one, let me have a quick little squeeze through because I do think it kind of has to go by stats because you didn't see much from anybody really across the day. You know, honestly, attacking-wise, Cleese might not bring a great deal, but defensively, Cleese has given us a great deal this season and is probably one of our better players to start this year, if I'm completely honest with you. I could really look to, to Cleese Haas there. I probably will still give that point to Chrissy Randall. I probably will give the point to Chrissy Randall. Uh, but again, the attack is just not there. But the defense is absolutely there. Did have two tackle breaks, but he only ran three times with 17 meters. 
and had 37 tackles made, which was our highest, our second highest amount of tackles in the day. Uh, highest for Sammy Verrills with 43, but he also had four missed tackles, right? Chris Randall, 37 tackles made for one missed tackle. Now, a lot of these guys in this, this team list right here, like three, three, four, three, four, five, three, five, four. That's our missed tackles from individual players, right? A couple of guys didn't miss any, like I've said, but a couple of guys have missed just the one. And, and then you got Liu and Palacio who missed just the two. But overall, defensively for the day, majority of guys didn't do well. But Chris Randall did stand up in that regard. Um, I, I will say, in regards to this hooker situation that we have with Sammy Verrills and, and Chris Randall, Chris Randall had three runs for 17 metres. Sammy Verrills had... Where is he? Two for 13 metres in regards to... Two runs for 13 metres. I think this is a bit of an issue that isn't really being spoken about enough. We don't have a hooker right now that really has that attacking mind about him. We don't really have that hooker that looks for the attack rather than just being a very solid defender because, again, although Sammy, Merrill, Sammy, Sammy Verrills was at fault of one specific try, which was the same try that he gave up in the Dragons game, he did miss four tackles, but he also made 43. So they're still making tackles, right? But you look at those attacker numbers and it's just not great at all. So... I know I said I didn't want to speak about too many of the negative stats here, but it's just something that I think needs to be kept an eye on, uh, to be honest with you, because yeah, it has not been, it has not been spectac spectacular in that regard. But I will give my point there to Chris Randall, so I'm giving three to Jimmy Jolliffe, I'm giving two to Aaron Clark, and I'm giving one to Chrissy Randall. Now before we do move on to the next game, I want to say this as well. I, you might have seen on Instagram that I made a call out to our boys, to defend our boy Keanu Kinney. There was a lot of moments in that game, but specifically one moment where Josh Curran got into the face of Keanu while Keanu was on the back. You know, Keanu's our youngest, most inexperienced player, fullback, um, obviously not going to a great time. We're losing, and Josh Curran decided to to be that aggressive, passionate player, right? And, and really shoved into him and got into his face and, and yelled at him and screamed at him and whatnot and embarrassed him and humiliated him. And I was very, very disappointed as a lot of other fans have voiced that nobody backed him up. Now, at no point will I ever call out any individual players. I will never, ever do that. I never have done that and I won't do that. But all I'll say is as a general team, we need to stand up for our blood. We need to stand up for our brothers and we can't allow that to happen. We cannot allow other teams to do what Josh Curran did, right? And I think that's something that absolutely should be addressed this this week. I think that it, it's not anything to do with the team bond because, guys, I see them. They are mates. They all do get along. It is what it is, right? They, they do support each other. It wasn't anything that I believe that had any malice to it in regards to our players not defending your own boy, I just think that it got to a point in that game where the score was against us and people and players were just clocked off. You know, and whether they saw it, didn't see it, because there was a couple of players who saw it, and there also was a couple of players who were close by who did not see it, and I can see that. But all I will say, as a general team, na naming absolutely no one, we need to do better in this regard. And this comes from a pure heart that loves this team and loves Keanu and loves every single boy on this team that we need to do better to protect ourselves. Because there's going to be every team, there's going to be every player out there who's going to want to really rub it in. Don't let it happen. Come in, get back in their face. You know what I want to say here. Tell them what I'm... You can just say what I'm thinking. I can't say it on a podcast, respectfully. <laughs> but... Back our boys in. Back our boys in. That's what I'll say. I don't care what the score is. Back our boys in. Is what I'll say. But we're going to move off that game, guys. I hope you appreciate what I've said. Whether you have a perspective that agrees with mine or a perspective that disagrees with mine, feel free to comment it on the YouTube channel or comment on Spotify, Apple, or you know, obviously you can find me on Instagram and whatnot as well. And if you're in the Gold Coast Science Fan Club or Frontline, you see when I post and whatnot. But that was a hard one. That was a hard one. And we need to bounce back. We need to bounce back this week. And we need to do it for our boy Tina. But not only just for Tina, we need to do it for ourselves. We need to do it for our club. We need to do it for our community, man. 
We need to bounce back for our community who deserve it. We've gone through such pain and such tough times. We deserve to feel happy. We deserve to have that moment. And I'm not talking about a grand final right now. I'm saying we deserve to have a moment we can celebrate at home. We deserve it. I always have your backs. Let's move into the next game. We've got the Gold Coast Titans taking on the Dolphins this week at Seabus Super Stadium. Uh, we are obviously the underdogs, but not as big of an underdog as, as I would have expected. The Titans coming to this game is 16th, obviously. The only team below us is the Rabbitohs right now. It's too early though, guys, but I'm not going to sit here and, and give us excuses, but it is still early. So still keep that faith alive, still keep that belief alive as best as you possibly can. And let's go again. Dolphins coming to this game in 7th position. They're a seventy three favourites. Now the Dolphins so far this season, for people who aren't aware, uh, in the first game they got towered up by the Cowboys and uh, did not look great. They looked like a wooden spoon potential favourites. And in the second game they went and beat the Dragons 38-0. The team that beat us 24, they went and flogged them 38-0 the week after. And then they had the buyers. So they're coming off the buy here, the Dolphins, into this game. Now, we've never beaten the Dolphins. Obviously, it was two and two, two, two for two for them last season. We all, we're all we not going to talk about that other game. And of, the other game was con- controversial. So one controversial game last year, and he who shall not be named. So our history against them isn't great. Obviously, we had a good preseason game against them this year, and we beat them in the preseason last year. But for some reason, we can beat them in preseason, do well in preseason. But when it comes to the regular season, we haven't had a great track record. But it has only been two games. So don't read too heavily into that, man. And this Dolphins team, is we don't know anything about it yet. Like, as of Titans, we don't know anything about this Dolphins team yet. Absolutely anything. They've had one good performance and one awful performance. You know? So we don't know anything about them. So don't get too down to the dumps just yet. There's a reason why the bookies aren't saying that we're $3 underdogs. There's a reason why the bookies still give us a slight little chance here. And that's where you take solace from. There's a slight little chance from people who aren't you and me, who aren't Titans fans, that are giving us a chance. That's what I take from those odds, because I don't gamble. I'm not betting. But those odds right there, I have done in the past, but those odds right there tell me that people are still giving us a slight little opportunity. So let's grab that. Let's grab that, is what I'll say. Now, our team list, uh, David Feeder, Jaden Campbell, Joey Stimo, Jojo Fafida, Josiah Pahulu, and Tom Weaver are in to the extended squad with Keanu Kenny and, unfortunately, our boy Tina Faso Malawi out with that ACL for the season. Uh, I will tell you, in regards to the Dolphins, good news, Jared Wallace isn't playing. He always seems to crush us. He always seems to, to really give it a good old crack against us. Jared Wallace is a big out there for them. But our team, we have Jaden Campbell back in the fullback. How was that? Let's give him a clap. Let's give him a clap. Jaden Campbell comes back. I do feel for Keanu Kenny, obviously, but we, he knows, we all know, that uh, Keanu Kenny was going to be making way for JC when he came back there. Uh, experience... And that's what the club has said they're going to be backing in. So much love out there to Keanu Kenny. Obviously, don't let it get you down. Just know that it wasn't for any other reason besides JC coming in. And I don't care about the criticism that I could cop from that because I do see the comments. I do see everything about people saying about Keanu. Uh, But I'm going to say the only reason he was dropped is because JC comes back into this team, which was always going to happen. Regardless of how good Keanu was, it was always going to be JC that would come back into this team. Right, so that's not a shot there. For, for, it's not a bad thing to Keanu uh, that he's not playing. It's just that this is the situation that he's in. And I know he's a patient man. I know he's a patient man. So best of luck to him back there at Tweed. He'll definitely kill it at Tweed. He'll crush it for Tweed and really help us out there. And we need help at Tweed. Let's see you guys right now. Now the wingers, Alofiana Camprera and Philip Sami with Brian Kelly and AJ Brimson in the centers. So unchanged two through five there. You go to the halves, Kieran Foran, who is captain, 5'8". He takes the captaincy from Tino with Tanner Boyd named in the halfback. I'm going to say this to you guys. Tommy Weaver is still too fresh. Tommy Weaver is still too fresh. Is Tanner playing well right now? No. I'll be straight up honest with you. No, he is not. But the players that get named on this team list do not deserve to have the tags the abuse in their messages, because I get it, so I know they're getting it, they don't deserve to get harassed based on being selected because that means that Desi believes in them and that means the club believes in them. And I'll tell you right now, was that I believe in Tan, but 
He's not given me any reason to come to his defence right now and say, the fans are wrong. The fans are wrong. Because right this very second, you are right in regards to his game. It's not good enough. Does that mean he can't get back to it? No. He definitely can. But I can't come to the defence and, and tell you something that I know. You guys are adults. You know this game. Tan knows this game. People don't give credit to the players. These players understand. These players understand when they're not playing well. Right? But Tanner is our seven this week. Tommy Weaver is still too fresh, too young. And don't throw him to the Wolves. Because Tanner's been thrown to the Wolves. Toby Sexton's been thrown to the Wolves. Kane Elgie was thrown to the Wolves. Jamal Fogarty was thrown to the Wolves. Who's done better now through experience. And Ash Taylor was thrown to the Wolves. All these guys thrown to the Wolves. And also, for the people commenting about Aiden Caesar getting dropped by this club, you have no idea what you're talking about, with all due respect. Like, the Caesar situation, that really grinded my gears when I saw that comment. Like, what are you, why are you fabricating the context of the story? Like, Aiden Caesar was not let go by the club for just because they didn't believe in him. They definitely believed in Caesar, but we had Cherry Evans. We signed him. Pen to paper, we had signed Daly Cherry Evans. Right, so we had to move on from Aiden Caesar. We let him go elsewhere because we had that locked in. And then we all know what happened there, but Caesar, a man of his word, a good bloke, did not get rid of his contract. He did not get rid of the contract with the Raiders, I think it was. He didn't let go of it. Which is a fine enough thing for him, man. Can't shoot him down for that. But please, stop talking as if Caesar was let go by this club. It's just not simply true. It's just not true. Now, Cherry Evans to Caesar, love Aiden, but Cherry Evans is a great halfback. As much as we don't like him, he's a great halfback. You know, so you're always choosing him over the likes of over the likes of Caesar. But I don't want to disrespect Caesar by saying that. But the point of the matter is we didn't just let him go, right? Without without anything in return, is what I'll say there. But to go back onto Tanner, back him in this week. Like, I understand the frustrations and the hurt, but back him in this week, he knows. Let's just hope that it doesn't let it get to his head. Let's just hope that he is able to come out and prove everyone wrong this week. And if he has another bad game, maybe people can start to talk then. But you can start talking now, but, like, it will... Uh, it's hard. It's hard. But I get it. Tanner knows he's not doing well. Everyone knows he's not doing well. He's named. So let's back our boy in. Front row forwards, Mikey Fodawaka, and obviously Kina Palacia comes in to start in replacement of Tino. Chrissy Randall is the number nine, with the back rowers being Cleese Haas and Bobby Firma. And in the 13 is Jimmy Jolliffe. Interchange-wise, Sam Beryls, Isaac Liu, Aaron Clark, and Joe Stimson. With the reserves being David Fafita, Jojo Fafita, Harley Smith Shields, Tom Weaver, and Josiah Bahulu. Now, could there be changes to this team on game day? Yes, there could be. Do I think Dave Fafita plays this net game? I don't believe so. I think they've put him here to give him every chance, but I think he'll play Cowboys, which is next week in Townsville. Could there be changes? Our reserves are a bit of an interesting one. I won't lie to you. I don't believe that they change the halfback, which is what a lot of people are probably hoping for right now. I don't believe they do. I know Tommy Weaver's there. Could I see Josiah Pahulu get a, get a spot? I could see it. I could see it. But I'm just going to sit back and trust Desi. I'm going to sit back and trust, trust Desi and put my belief in him. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to believe that he knows what he's doing. Because that's what we had believed at the start. And that's what I'm going to believe now. So as hard as that may be as we currently speak, I will lay my faith in Desi, who has won multiple premierships and taken teams to grand finals and rejuvenated and, and galvanized teams that are facing adversity. He's galvanized them. I believe in Desi Hasler. I will say this now. I believe in Des Hasler. And I don't stand down from that. Especially not after three rounds. I think that this Titans team, this week, needs to look at this game like we treated Manly at Brookvale last year. I actually can't believe I've been speaking for an hour by myself, to be fair, but I guess that's how passionate about, I am about this club, guys. Um... This team needs to go into this game this week remembering how it felt after we lost to this Dolphins team. 
this new fad of a fan base, this fad of a club, the Titans need to understand that when we gave up that lead in the, the game that we do not speak about, he who shall not be named, the very next week we had to travel to Brookvale. I remember it. We were all really, really hurting. Probably not as much as this week, but all really, really hurting. And then Manly came around and we, we beat him by like 14 points. We really gave him a good touch up down there in, Mel, in, uh, in Manly. And every single one of the boys really felt rejuvenated and felt really positive about that. But they went in with the right mindset. It's about the mindset. It's about our mindset. You can't go into any game with this ego or this attitude. You have to go in knowing who we are as a club. You have to go in with this attitude that you believe that we can do it and that we will do it, but not that, that, not that we have done it. We can't have this aura that we're roosters when we're not. As I've said in this podcast already, we have to remember who we are as a club. And who we are as a club is a team that is a battling team. That is a team that will throw everything at the line, win, lose, or draw, regardless of what people are saying here, there, everywhere. Remember who we are as a club and as a community. We are a battler through thick and thin. That's how we have to treat this game. Regardless of the lacking history that the Dolphins do have because they've only been around for one year, we need to treat this game like that manly one from last year where we're hurt and we're in pain. Our community is feeling it. We'll slap them, son. Slap them. And if we get the momentum, don't lose it. And at any point, you keep on piling that pressure and you keep throwing your body at the line. So I'm going to back our boys in. And I said, when I was at one of our Titans fans' place in Sydney, I say to his place, I said to the boys that I was staying with, I can't tip us this week. I cannot tip us this week. But I'm not going to give up on this team. I'm not going to give up on this team despite how hurt I've been and how broken I've been this week. I will not give up on this team. I will not give up. So I will tip us by 1 or 12. I will go in with not high expectations. I will go into this game understanding the shit can hit the fan. If we lose by 13 plus, I don't know what happens. We need to really find a way to be in this game compete in this game and show who we are as a club. People are going to throw things at us from left, right and centre but at the end of the day we're a family. We are a family club and let's remember that we are a family club. Let's remember that we are a family community club. We are not the Melbourne Storm. We are not the Brisbane Broncos. We are a club that cares about the people that support us, the people in the organization, the players, the staff, and the players' family and staff family, everyone. We are all Gold Coast Titans. That's what we need to remember. Titans 1 and 12. That's what I'll say about that. But there we go, guys. I think that's pretty much it here. Obviously, we will back to normal podcasting from next week with Clarky. I've done my best. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. I didn't expect... I thought I was going to be here for like 20 to 30 minutes, but I've ended up being here for about an hour. It's a good way to sit back and vent for, on my behalf, and I hope it's a good way for you guys to sit back and just listen in to another perspective, a passionate perspective. I will say one last thing. I'm not... I don't believe I'm always right. But I will not stand down to the opinion that I have that our team is great. I will not stand down to always supporting this club. And although I can be a polarizing figure in my belief for the Gold Coast Titans, at the end of the day, I know where my heart is. 
I know my intentions. I know who I am. And I know that I do it because I want you guys to be happy. And I want you guys to have belief and I want to galvanize our fan club and fan base and the front line, the legion, everyone. I'm not always right. A lot of the time I'm wrong. And I'll sit here and I'll, I'll put my hand up and say, you know, if you feel like I've led you down a path where you're believing too much in a team that hasn't done well, I put my hand up and I'll apologize to you. But I won't tell you that I've lied to you because I've always believed and I will continue to believe. So much love, guys. I will be there at CBI Super Stadium banging those drums on the front line. I know the front line will be there and I hope the Legion turns up. We need you to turn up. We need you to turn up and support this team. Now more than ever. If you call yourself a fan of this club and you live on the Gold Coast, get to this game. Get to this game. Do it. No excuses. If you're from outside of the Gold Coast, we get it. We understand and you're a supporter. It's just as much as appreciated because you're still supporting us online. You're still supporting us as a person and we're still feeling your energy. So regardless where you are, your support is appreciated. But if you are on the Gold Coast, get to the game. Support the team that represents you through thick and thin. Obviously, guys on YouTube, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. We're back with the normal podcast next week. Spotify, Apple, appreciate you. And let's go Titans, baby. Let's go Titans. Let's remind ourselves who we are. Back in the boys.